Welcome everybody, thank you guys for tuning in today. We've got a very fun dissected episode where we will be introducing... Refined, refined, refined. Refined, refined, <laughs> updated, improved. The reintroduction of the Yeti SB mountain bike family. A brand new 120, 140, and 160. So let's dive in and get to know the new Yeti. So with this release of the updated Yeti SB lineup, refinement is the name of the game. There is the SB160, which is a 170 mil front, 160 rear bike. The SB140, which comes in a lunch ride or standard option. Now the lunch ride version, which we have, has a 160 fork, 140 rear end, and the standard has a 150 fork with a 140 rear end. And for the XC pinners out there, the SB120 is going to be your new high performance rocket ship. So those are the three models. Let's get into some of the changes across all platforms that will be commonly shared by the new SB lineup. So across the board with the new lineup, you're gonna see a lot tighter packaging of everything from the frame to the shock linkage to even how some of the componentry works with the bike. Uh, starting off, every bike gets the UDH, which we're seeing on a lot of new models now. They've done a really uh, intent job of getting the frames to be as narrow as possible. It sounds like kind of an odd thing, but you really notice it when you're on the bike, kind of moving around on it. They've really kept everything in a tight plane. Um, the like hang down of the down tube has been reduced significantly, giving it just better clearance over obstacles. And they've also tightened up the linkage for all three models giving it tighter hardware basically. Yeah, so we sat down and we'll cut away to some of the interviews we had with the Yeti staff. It was a pretty big zoo meeting. We had a lot <laughs> of folks from uh, their in-house shock tuner to uh, the suspension kinematic guy to, I mean, you name it, the engineers all were on board. And there was a lot of goals, right? And, and one of the big takeaways for us as we were kind of sitting in to learn about these new bikes is that um, a lot of things are the same, and that was intentional, right? They, Yeti felt very confident, happy. The feedback from their racers and their customers was that this was a pretty sweet bike. How can we make it better? And so some of the key things, right, were making it a little bit tighter, a little bit more maintenance free, uh, a little more longevity, uh, while also improving the ride and feel. From the previous generation bikes, you're gonna gain uh, a bit of stiffness through the chassis without lacking compliance. That's kind of what we were going for. We we're looking for like a sharper handling bike without having all those trail feedbacks beat you up like you get with some chassis that are too stiff, um, as well as just possibly a more balanced across, across the, the line. The bikes are a little bit more balanced, uh, neutral riding, so you can you have a composed yet compliant ride. So we're looking for a bike that is going to absorb the bumps the right way, uh, but not do extra movement that you don't need, just to keep the bikes efficient, really, I would say. The Switch Infinity units have seen some changes in both hardware as well as the material that they're using on those uh, sliders. So sensitivity is going to be increased a little bit. You're gonna gain some of that small bump compliance uh, and just a, a, an active, lively feel. They moved to black oxide bearings, which should last a bit longer. They have updated dust seal or water seals on the outside, so the bearings should be better protected. And then with that new hardware in the Switch Infinity unit, they're claiming that it's gonna have a lot better durability and we'll see how those last over the winter here. Absolutely. And some of the other nice features and improvements that, again, Yeti was working on with refinement in mind are clamped cable uh, ports. So whether you're running axis like we have on some of our bikes or you're running cabled uh, shifting, your brake housing, et cetera, droppers, all that stuff will be clamped in there. They also make some really nice integrated plugs if you are running a wireless system. The down tube protection was something that Yeti really worked on improving with this bike. It's got some nice edge to edge uh, increased size and there's it's a dual material skid plate now. Yeah. So you've got, you know, like a, a bit more of a cushiony layer up against the frame and then you'll notice there's that secondary layer which can be removed and it gives you a nice big cutout. So if you want to, get in there, run some cables, the dropper posts, et cetera. You've got uh, a nice access port to get into the bike. 
Um, speaking of access ports to get into the bike, one thing that is not included on this bike, which lends itself to this yeah. svelte frame, as you called it, is a lack of internal storage, which may or may not be an issue, but yeah. no doubt it makes the bike sleek and sexy. One of the, I guess, last things that I want to talk about uh, on the frame changes or improvements is the threaded bottom bracket. I think that's something that a lot of you guys um, at home mechanics, you know, bike shop mechanics are all going to be very happy about. Um, again, longevity, durability, uh, reduction in maintenance schedules are all things that Yeti was focusing on when they were refining this SB lineup. With all three models, we've been testing the size large, starting with the 120, which we didn't mention earlier, but that comes with a 130 mil fork. The reach on the 120 is 475, the stack is 625, the head angle across the board, no matter the size, is 66 and a half degrees, but the seat angle does change. Um, they all come out to an effective 76 and a half at like the measured height, but depending on your seat post length, you're going to get a slightly different and with every size steeper seat tube angle. Uh, chain stays, those range from on the very short end. Uh, 433 mil and then on the double extra large up to 443 mil so there's a super wide sizing range for these and we're bang in the middle of it with the size large um, not a t not too much else else has changed geo wise on the bike uh, it's going to feel pretty balanced and thanks to the like relatively long travel for an xc bike i think it's going to be a lot more capable than some of the more like pointed race weapons that you see out there all right, so let's move into the SB140. Uh, as we said, they make a lunch ride uh, version as well as a standard. And the lunch ride version is a little bit more of like the aggressive uh, trail rider's choice, I would say. Yeah. Dario, you've obviously been spending the most amount of time on this bike, so give us the numbers on those. Yeah, so for the 140, again, we've got the lunch ride version, which comes with a 10 mil longer fork, 160 up front. Uh, that puts the head angle at 65 degrees. The stack is the same as on the 120 at uh, 625. Seat angles around 77, again, size dependent. Chain stays are around 440, uh, you know, and, and the range extends on both directions there. Again, it's really just a half a degree different head angle because of that longer fork. And you also do get a different shock spec. The lunch ride comes with a piggyback with the new Float X, where the non lunch ride comes with a Fox DPS inline shock. So slightly different character. The lunch ride is definitely more like the all mountain bike in the lineup these days versus the standard 140 being more of a like well-rounded trail bike. I mean, semantics, but I like the lunch ride personally. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, we're gonna get into the SB160. Again, this is their long travel enduro race machine, which you will no doubt see making its way to many EWS podiums. So the head tube angle on our SB166 at 64 degrees, it has a 485 millimeter reach and has a standover height of 750 millimeters. The chainstay ranges from 437 up to 445 millimeters with the size large having a 441. The effective seat tube angle sits at 77.5 degrees and gives an overall wheelbase of 1,270 millimeters. So it certainly isn't the most radically slack or overkill enduro bike out there on the market. But again, um, when it comes to racing and what people want out on the trails, uh, it's hard to argue with the pedigree and the amount of podiums that these bikes have been put to. Yeah, and it's worth noting too that we just wrapped up our enduro field test last month. Even amongst that super new crop of bikes, some of which are kind of pushing the geo, nothing's going too far beyond a 64 degree head angle. It seems to be the well-rounded best choice for people who are like pushing it between the tape, I think. Um, yeah, it's what's cool about this bike, and I think across the board, right, uh, that we have noticed is that the Yetis pedal really well, and they're, they're pretty lightweight bikes. So um, 
we've taken this out on some pretty gnarly aggressive stuff. We've done some shuttle days, but we've also gone out and pedaled and ridden some lower grade kind of mellower stuff. And it's still playful, light and active enough to where it doesn't feel like just like a tranquilized racehorse, just like plopping along down yeah. the trail, you know? No, I mean, and I think splitting the difference between like pedally race and enduro race, the 140 to me has been kind of a Goldilocks in that, in that range. Um, I live up in Bellingham and I've been riding it there quite a bit. Even on like the steepest, gnarliest tracks we have up there, it's gotten down. Maybe it's not like the most confident feeling bike on it, but it feels great. Uh, thanks to the like the lunch ride spec, you get like a slightly higher front end. It does shorten the reach a little bit. I forgot to mention that earlier, but with the lunch ride, it's a 480 reach versus a 485. Really small difference realistically. But I've liked the way that the bike feels even on the steepest stuff. Part of it is just how active the rear end feels and like the grip is always there, which is nice. So let's briefly talk about the availability of these bikes uh, from a price and spec option, of course. Uh, Yeti will be offering this in two different carbon fiber models. Um, so you've got the higher end, more premium Turk uh, editions, which are what we have here. And then You've got the C-Series, which is their more standard carbon layup. Uh, basically with the Turk, you're saving a bit of weight. I forget exactly how much, but it's a couple hundred grams on each frame. And with the C-Series, you're saving quite a bit of money. So yeah. trade off, but starting prices across the board are around 6,300 for a, a pretty good build kit. And then it goes up as far as 12K for like the carbon wheel package. Well, everything we have here on test is sitting around 10,400. Uh, with aluminum wheels, an axis drive train, factory suspension. Uh, all of these bikes also will be available as a frame only option, which is $4,300 for the 120. The C series starts out at $6,300 on that 120. The next step goes up to $6,600. And then to get into the Turk model, you're gonna be starting at $8,200 and then progressing from there to 9,600 and a top priced T4 for $12,100. For the SB140, a frame will be $4,500. You will get into that C1 model for $6,400. Then move up to the T2 Turk at $8,600 and climb up to the top tier, which is $11,500. And then lastly, the SB160 will be available as a frame option for $5,000. The entry level complete bike, the C1, retails for $6,700. Getting into the Turk Carbon, you go up to 9,100 and climb up to $12,000 for the top of the line T4 model there. So these are definitely performance-minded bikes with a performance-minded budget. Um, but I think, you know, throughout our meeting with the Yeti team, the amount of time and development that they've put into these bikes from, you know, their in-house shock tuner who, you know, we talk to quite a bit and going out with their, you know, testing, custom valving, tuning and shimming these shocks. It's a lot of work that they go into these things. And again, you know, um, Yeti doesn't really hold back with like their race heritage, their race branding. And, uh, you know, if you are a rider that is willing to, you know, step up to the plate, you're gonna be getting a performance and premium product. And with that, you know, you get a bit of the price tag as well. First ride impressions. I haven't ridden a Yeti since it had 26 inch wheels on it. So um, I, I've only ridden a Yeti hardtail. So, okay. so uh, yeah. that being said, we're obviously not diehard Yeti guys. Uh, we haven't ridden every iteration of these bikes. That's not true. We did ride the Yeti 160E, which was an e-bike, Sixfinity, switch and fit, a little bit different, yeah. but okay. Yeah. So. I was really impressed. There, there is a pretty small and fine window for a uh, sag and suspension setup. Yeah. Uh, Yeti has a pretty cool calculator system that is up on their website, which is really cool. Um, but one of the things that we noticed when we first got on the bike is that it would, felt a little stiff, chattery and harsh. And uh, you know, some of the other guys were like, I'm feeling that too. And they were like wanting to open compression and let air out. But um, you know, after kind of talking to the Yeti guys, I was like, let's add air and keep adding air and keep adding air. 
and, and add some more compression. And then all of a sudden the bike started feeling smoother and better and it really transformed the bike and how it felt. So um, I will say that, um, you know, some bikes can have a real big window of sag. You don't have to be super accurate and other bikes are pretty, you know, pointed in how you have to have them set up. Yeah. Uh, and I would say that these bikes, you definitely want to take that time. You want to follow those instructions, go to that calculator and kind of get in that right zone. Yeah. Once we got there, um, the bikes, all of them really started to shine. They were a lot of fun. Uh, a big takeaway for me is speed. The pedaling characteristics are very different feeling, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. We were talking about it earlier. It's like, it's not DW like feeling. It's not like VPP feeling. It, it has like a really unique flavor. Definitely not horse link four bar feeling, no. which is kind of what it is. Right. Right. Which yeah. is which is odd. Yeah. Um, which I guess a lot of that has to do with that switch that switch infinity link and that linear move or i guess that reversing linear movement rather than that swing it's a variable instant center so like the idea being that they're not only tuning the curve generally but they're tuning how it feels at different points in the curve yeah it's it's definitely a, a very unique and a cool feeling bike when you really kind of focus on the nuances and the small bits of feedback you get um it's it's not like the super plush soft feel and you know cadillac but it's not like a super sharp VPP. Um, it still pedals really well, but without like that kind of hard hanging up on like the square edge bumps. Yeah. Um, it, obviously as we ride it more, we're gonna work on perfecting our tune and play around with more settings. But, hmm. but my initial impressions so far are pretty good. I'm definitely pleased with the bike, uh, really in all facets of the performance. Well, folks, there you have it, the refined SB line from Yeti. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and got some good information from it. Uh, please ask any questions that you have down below. We will do our best to answer you. And anything that we can't answer, we will pass along to the folks at Yeti and hope that they will chime in with their expertise. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We will be working on a long-term review on these bikes as well as many others. And we would love to have you back in the future. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you out on the trails.